songwriting time Where we learn to combine Melody and harmony Rhythm and rhyme So come on, let's go It's a songwriting show For course code MUS310 All right, hey, welcome back to the uh, to the show. Um, it is Friday afternoon when everyone's energy level kind of levels off. And so I probably shouldn't be trying to film something on a Friday afternoon, but I'm going for it because I want to get this done, man. I'm heading into the weekend, want to finish the week strong. So here we go. We're going to talk about the mighty seventh chord. Now, as you know, as we've talked about, uh, the chords in the major key are the triads are made up by stacking the thirds, by stacking three notes together in thirds. And I've got a picture of those seven resulting triads right there in the key of C major. Now, if, uh, if we want to keep going and add another third on top of that, we end up with seventh chords. And um, these seventh chords are chords that we can use in our songs. Now, a lot of the songs that we hear, certainly worship songs, uh, the majority of pop music is basically triadal. They just stick to the triads. You don't hear a whole lot of seventh chords, but the seventh chords are an option for you as a songwriter to use to harmonize your song. And uh, so we're gonna talk about those today. Um, those chords sound a little bit different. So the, the one chord, if we uh, turn it from a triad into a seventh chord, it becomes a major seventh chord. So here's the, just the triad. If we add the major seventh, it's got a different sound. It sounds a little more open, but it's got a sweet sort of dreamy, fluffy kind of quality to it. Um, so if we had in the key of C, say our progression was the one chord and then the four chord with, with just triads, it sounds like this. If we do that same chord progression, but we use seventh chords, it sounds like this. So you hear that, it sounds sort of sweeter, uh, fluffier, dreamier. And so if that fits the mood of your song, then you could do that. Remember the cardinal rule of songwriting is that everything we do uh, in our composition has to enhance the emotion of the song. So if you're writing something that's dreamy and sweet and kind of fluffy, you can use these uh, major seventh chords. So here on the, on the staff, you can see these are the major seven chords, the, um, uh, just a stack of thirds, four notes stacked in thirds, and we end up with these seventh chords. So the one chord is this major seven chord. The two chord is a minor seventh chord. Now, the difference between the minor triad, it doesn't sound all that different in mood to us, the way there's a big shift sort of to the dreamy sweet sound uh, from a major triad to a major seven chord. Um, so the two chord is minor seven, the three chord is a minor seven, here's E minor seven. We get to the four chord, that's a major seven dreamy sounding chords. Now when we get to the five chord, that's a dominant seventh chord. Now the difference between a dominant seven and a major seventh is that um, a major seventh, that seventh is a major seven interval from the root of the chord. That interval there is a major seventh. On a dominant chord, that seventh is a minor seventh, the interval from the, the root of the chord to the seventh. And so it has a, a much different quality to it. There's a lot of tension in that chord. That chord needs to resolve. It wants to resolve back to the one, to the one chord. Now, in a lot of the music that you're listening to, pop music and certainly worship music, we just play triads um, for the five chord. We, you hardly ever in modern worship music hear an actual seventh chord but it's there it's available uh, for you to use if it helps the mood of your song so we're at the five chord we move up to the sixth chord the sixth chord is another minor seven so in the key of c that's an a minor seven that's like that then the seven chord that's the the half diminished or the minor seven flat five 
Um, that's kind of the weird uncle of the chords of the diatonic scale. Um, you will go years playing in church uh, without ever coming across one of those guys. So uh, we won't really worry about, um, about that chord uh, today. Um, but those seventh chords are available for you uh, to use if you want, uh, if they enhance the mood of your song. Now, for a lot of uh, pop music and worship music, the seventh chords don't really work, but there are some other extensions, extra notes that we can add to the triads uh, to add interest and to add, um, to add a flavor to them, to color them uh, in ways that, uh, that are popular. And I mean, a lot of this, what sort of chord sounds are popular, I mean, it's just, it's what's in fashion. Like uh, 70, 80 years ago, when uh, the Tin Pan Alley, Broadway era of American songwriting, uh, seventh chords were really popular. Uh, but sort of since the advent of rock and roll, uh, pop music has gotten a lot more triadal, simple and clean uh, in the harmony. Um, of course, jazz music, lots of seventh chords and extension uh, chords and uh, jazz musicians are uh, seemingly incapable of restricting themselves to, to three notes at a time. Uh, they've got to use multiple extensions. Um, but for us, for our sort of pop music style of songwriting, um, these are the extensions that are popular that you can use. There's the, um, there's the two chord or sometimes the add two chord. So in the key of C, we'd add the two, which would be a D and that sounds like this or like this. And that's a, that gives that chord sort of an open, uh, sound and, uh, it's a little bit pretty, but not quite as sweet and saccharine as the major seventh chord. So you hear a lot of two chords. Um, so you're for your one and your, um, for the one chord for C and then for four, for the four chord, you can add that, that two extension. Um, the other kind of chord that you see is the sus chord, which is short for the suspended chord where you suspend the third, where you raise the third by a, uh, a semitone. So in C, you could um, play an F, that's the, uh, by lifting the third, the third is the E, you lift that up. Um, that's a popular chord, sometimes used as a passing chord. Um, that's an extension that's available to you. Um, the uh, adding the six to a major chord, like the um, like adding an A to a C chord, again is um, not that popular of a sound. It was popular, or like that kind of sound. It was popular 80 years ago, not so much uh, today. But uh, the two uh, is an extension that you can add to your um, to your major chords. You can add it to the one chord, the four chord. There's an F2 or the five chord. So that's a C2, uh, that's like an, a G2, an F2 to a C2. So that's a way to add sort of an openness and some color to your basic chord progressions. Uh, in terms of your, the minor chords uh, in the key, uh, you can use the seventh extension. It doesn't change the color of the chord uh, a whole lot. Uh, you can also use the um, the ninth uh, extension on uh, on the two minor chord and the six minor chord, uh, and those can sound really pretty and sweet. So here would be an A minor nine chord. So that's that's a really pretty sound. Um, and uh, on the what did I say on the the two chord? So on the that's a D minor nine chord. So that sounds pretty kind of uh, jazzy. So if that fits the mood of your song, um, you can use that. Um, now you probably have a couple questions here. One question would be, well, what about on the three minor? Can you use the nine? Well, because of the way the notes line up on the, um, uh, on the scale, the, the nine extension on D minor and A minor are, that ninth is a major ninth interval. Um, from the uh, from the root of the chord, and that's a, that's pleasing to our ears. But on the three chord, uh, which would be E minor, that ninth would be a minor ninth. That would be the, the chord there. Sounds kind of like too crunchy. 
it's it's uh, it's very ugly sounding. You basically never see it. I'm sure there's some song out there that uses it, but um, you rarely ever see it. Uh, but that's an extension uh, that you can use, and that is sort of the um, uh, those are the extensions available on the major and the um, and the minor chords. Now the dominant seventh chord, the five chord, the dominant seventh chord. For some reason, that dominant seventh chord can handle almost any note, inside or outside of the key, as an extension, and it sounds it sounds great. It works. So here's our um, this is our dominant seventh chord in the key of uh, we're in the key of C. So the dominant seventh, the five chord is G seven. Oh yeah, I said you had two um, two questions. One was what about the three chord? The other one was well, what's the difference between a nine chord and a two chord? So that's a great question, and here's how I understand that: is um, because the ninth is just an octave above the two, so aren't those the, the same the same notes? Why don't you just say the um, the A minor two? Uh, well, here's, my understanding is that if the number of the extension is higher than eight like if it's nine or 13 or whatever, then that chord, it's understood to include the seventh. So an A minor nine chord would include, uh, it'd be like to go up, it'd be A, C, E, G would be the seventh, and then the ninth would be the B. Um, so if that number is higher than eight, then that chord includes the seventh plus whatever that number is, nine or 13. So, so here's a... Um, so we're back to G7. So here's G7 with the ninth extension down here. So, so that that works. Uh, adding the ninth, um, we can add, we can suspend that chord. So if we add the um, uh, suspend the third, that's G7 suspended or G7 sus. That works. Um, and now uh, we can add the six as well. And so because, because we're adding the six and we already have the seventh, then we call that a G13, a 13th chord. So, and that sounds like this. And that resolves nicely to C major seven. So that's a pretty sounding chord, um, resolves to the C major seven. Now, one thing about these uh, using chords with lots of extensions, uh, in your song, you, you kind of have to decide if you're going to use uh, all seventh chords, if you're going to use lots of seventh chords and, and rich extensions, then you got to do that for the whole song. Because if you're just, if the song is just triadal, and then you just throw in one, um, uh, one chord out of the blue with a whole bunch of extensions to it, then it, that chord is kind of like the guy who showed up to the party and thought it was a costume party. Uh, so you, you probably don't wanna do that. It's either like all or, or nothing um, in terms of these richer extensions. Um, but uh, so back to that dominant seventh chord, that dominant seventh chord, you can also add notes outside of the key um, to extend that. So we could add the flat nine, so that'd be an A, uh, an A flat. And that, that chord has lots of tension to it, but it resolves nicely to a C major seven. If you play a chord like that, and then just uh, resolve it to a plain old C, that's just a plain old C triad, it doesn't quite, doesn't quite work. It's like that guy, that one guy who wore a costume to the non-costume party. Um, but you can add that flat nine, you can add that sharp nine, so here's the uh, G, um, G7 sharp nine. And then you can resolve that to a C major seven. And the ear accepts that, it, it, it works. Um, and uh, so a, a lot of these, basically every note in the scale can be added as an extension to a dominant chord, except for one. Uh, and that is you cannot add a major seven as an extension over a dominant seven. That is a terrible, terrible sound. That would be like crossing the streams in Ghostbusters. Uh, if you add, if you play a major seven over a dominant seventh chord, uh, then 
basically the musical universe folds in upon itself, implodes, and disappears forever. And I would hate for you to be responsible for that. People think that, uh, you know, earthquakes are caused by, you know, tectonic plates shifting or volcanoes, but uh, actually I think they are caused by people playing major sevenths over dominant seventh chord. So if the terrorists ever find out about this, we are in big trouble. Okay, so that is uh, seventh chords. And uh, I have to give you guys a little something, a little Easter egg uh, at the end of the video for making it all the way through uh, this video. And so here it is. Uh, this is uh, Preston's uh, debut recording on the recorder. Major seventh chords. So um, here's a uh, picture of the, uh, or a, uh, what is it, standard notation. Uh, I'm going to edit that out. We're going to go back. 